So uh, it's day four, you guys. Like, that's a big deal. And it's, I haven't acknowledged anything that's actually, like, occurring, like, in the world. Like, you know, Mother's Day and all the... I haven't done any of that, you know. Sorry. Still trying to get into the groove. It's all very strange. But day four, which means we've done, you know, a back-to-basics day, two theme thing days, yes. And today is a recipe day. So I will be giving you a recipe today. And I'm going to tell you what that recipe is in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day four of year two of 365 days of soap. I promise at some point I'll stop saying year two, but it's year two, and that's awesome. And what else is awesome today is we are making a basic three batch of soap, and I'm giving you my recipe for a basic three soap, which is cool. Now, the thing with this soap, it's actually a little bit different because not only is it using my basic three oils, it's also a coffee soap. So instead of using water, we are using brewed coffee. So there's that as well. Now, the oils that we that I put into a basic three recipe are uh, coconut oil, palm oil, and olive oil. Now I do the coconut oil for the bar hardening as well as the bubbly. And I do the palm oil, lots and lots of stearic acid and palm. Definitely helps out with the bar hardening as well. Uh, there's a lot else that palm is great for, really. And then the olive oil is going to be for the nice, gentle, you know, moisturizing cleanse. So, awesome. And I'm going to be playing around with the soap calc and talking about, you know, why you should super fat, what the point of these oils are, all of the jazz, as well as, you know, the actual process of putting in the coffee and doing the things within this recipe. And now this is your recipe. You can have this recipe. So let's go to the video and we'll talk about your recipe, my recipe, but you can have it, you know now. Okay, our very first official recipe day, although I gave you one for the coconut dish soap before too. Now, we are doing a full basic three with coffee. So there it all is. Go ahead and pause and get that recipe. Now, 5% super fat, and this is with my basic three. Now, remember when I was talking about um, soap calc and the INS numbers and everything, and how I don't really like to use the INS numbers. This is why. You look at all of these numbers here, and we're sitting about an INS of like 169 in total, but also things like um, the cleansing ratio number is very, very high. The bubbly number is reasonably low. I don't, this is why I don't take, put much stock in what this actually, um, in those numbers and what they actually mean. And you will see, we're doing a, a lather test at the end of all of this with, you know, this soap. So you'll see, you know, why I don't put a lot of stock in that, you know, anyway. But with this recipe, the, instead of using distilled water, I used brewed coffee that, you know, I brewed and then cooled down and put in, in place of the water. And you see how dark it got the oils, right? Now, and you know, now the, the soap batter, kind of darkish, but then I put the kaolin clay in and it lightened up to this beautiful cream color, which is absolutely delightful. And you will get to see, you know, just what that ends up looking like in the finished product. Now, 
because this recipe has um, a lot of white oils, essentially, as it saponifies, it gets lighter in color. Um, I get a lot of questions about, you know, does the wine change the color of the soap? Does coffee change the color of the soap? It can, but in my experience, it doesn't. And that mostly has a lot to do with the amounts of kaolin clay that I put into it. But also, if you're using a lot of light colored oils, well, when they, when they saponify, everything gets a little bit lighter, which is cool. Now, this is actually a bar for a custom account, for a wholesale account, so it's a custom bar. And so it is a, uh, it's not available on the website, is the whole point that, that, that I was trying to make with that one. Yep, sorry, tired, need coffee like you would not believe. And I literally always get this way whenever I am making coffee soaps. I'm just tired, which is, you know, crazy. But with this basic three, the reason why I gave you this recipe is because when we were talking on, I think it was day one, about a well-balanced recipe, this is what I would consider a well-balanced recipe. Uh, you have three oils that play really nicely together, even though soap calc says they do not. And it's they're all reasonably easy to source oils, and it produces a nice bar of soap. That's the activated charcoal that's going in to make that a little bit darker. Now, it, but it produces a nice bar of soap. It's a, it's a nice hard bar. It's nice and moisturizing, and it has a really decent lather to it. And you're gonna see that lather, you know, in the cut, really, because we're doing that today. Yay, lather tests. So it's a really good recipe to keep in your your arsenal. And I this is one of my workhorse recipes. This is the one that I use for the majority of all the soap classes that we teach. This is one of the ones that it gets used a lot. It's a really well-balanced uh, recipe that I quite enjoy. And also when we were talking about the solid dish soap on day one of year two, that, you know, the 0% super fat and how that can get kind of kind of dangerous if your saponification values are different from chart to chart. This is a recipe you wouldn't really have to worry about those slight differences in because while they can make a big difference with your lye, you have that super fat that's definitely going to give you some extra cushion. All right, and on to the pour for this guy. Now, we're gonna do just an in-the-pot swirl for this particular bar. And in the pot swirl is also a lovely, you know, for beginner soap makers, it's also a lovely pour technique to keep in your arsenal because it's very easy. Um, almost any type of batter, the thickness of batter will, will work reasonably well with an in the pot swirl. And every bar is, you know, kind of varied and different and unique and beautiful in its own way, which is excellent. And these are the ones in the pot swirls I'm sorry, in the mold swirls. I love how I just said in the pot swirl like five times. That was cool. In the mold swirl. We're doing it in the mold swirl. Yes. So I'm laying all the colors down in alternating S curves, essentially. And we'll continue doing that over and over and over again until all of the colored portions are in the mold. And yeah, the in the mold swirls are the ones that always produce the best soap Rorschach. And I love soap Rorschach more than anything in the world it's so much fun to look at all of these different you know bars and be like oh yeah i see a peacock here and i see a bat here and i see you know all kinds of stuff uh, i had a tyler durden once that you i saw like a literal heart like a heart not like a love heart but like a heart heart in it it was i held on to that particular soap that had like the heart in it for like four years before I finally, I don't know, used it or someone bought it. I have no idea. But yeah, it's a definitely really easy, easy pour and produces really, really stunning bars as a result. And so these are one of, you know, these are my favorite types of pours to do really. The ingredients are easy to source, nothing really complicated. They all play really nicely together. No real uh, fear of acceleration. As you can see, you can look how fluid that batter is. So even with, you know, 66% of the oils in this batch being hard oils, it still produces a beautifully fluid batter that allows you to do, you know, awesome swirls. 
or you could continue mixing it and get it thicker. And uh, you can also get, you know, thick enough soap to do your layered stuff or your drop swirls or all of that jazz. So very versatile recipe really with the basic three. And again, it is all oils that, um, it's, it's all oils that are easy to source, which is super awesome. Now for the top of this, we like to make all of the soaps that for this particular wholesale account, because it's a, it's a coffee shop. Uh, we like to make them all look like coffee essentially. And so this is meant to like represent like the foam on top, or sometimes we do ones that look like, you know, like iced frappuccino type things, right? Those things. I, I don't know. I drink my coffee black. So I am, uh, aware of all of the awesome drinks out there. I used to drink them a lot, but unless it's pumpkin spice latte season, I just drink black coffee with milk. But, so I guess that's not black, right? But it's also not fancy. Whatever. I don't really drink coffee because I enjoy coffee. I drink coffee because I need caffeine. So there's all that. But yeah, this house, actually the coffee itself in this was used for, the coffee that I used for this is also from the coffee house. And so that's another little extra piece of you know, them bringing their brand into this, which is great. And if you have the opportunity to do that with wholesale accounts, I 100% recommend it. It just really does bring that little added touch of them to a product that, you know, they didn't really make, but they're going to be stocking in their business and using in their line. And so, you know, it should reflect their brand. And so, Yes, that's awesome. Now I did let this sit up, set up for around five minutes or so before I take a spoon to it to kind of sculpt the top and make it look more foamy, all of, all that jazz, make it pretty, that, that's all. Now this will be put in the oven for C pop and gel because I like to C pop and gel. And we will check out the cut as well as the test, you know, well, tomorrow, but right now for you, so let's go check it out. Okay, now onto the cut of this, and the outside looks so pretty and shiny. I love that so much. And yeah, cool swirls in that, right? It's just, everything's just kind of chaotic and different and fun. And I'm definitely here for that. Now, as you can see, the coffee did not impact this at all. At all. The, the white is white. The browns are browns. The maroons are maroons. And the reason that all of these colors exist actually is also client request because these are their business colors. And so that's another part of bringing, you know, the wholesale account into, um, you know, the actual soap and that's cool. But yeah, the, uh, the full brewed coffee does not impact it at all. It, you, you saw it happen here, my friends, that's really awesome. And the, uh, the soaps themselves, they're reasonably firm right now. I will let them continue to cure up before I deliver them to the client or they cure out with the client, either way. But we're about 12 hours after pour here, but we're gonna go ahead and test the lather anyway. And again, a very soft bar at this point, but that's a good bubble. So we go back to those INS numbers and it like was putting my bubble at like a 22. Eh. It's, it's not so much. Now, this is actually my big bubble blend, which I will be giving you a recipe for in a few days, and also a coffee soap, but done in a different way. So some of the contributing factor to the bubble here is actually the coffee, because the one that we just made had coffee in it. The yellow one does not. So there's that. That's lots of fun. There's your uh, recipe for the basic three, and it is a uh, day four of day th uh, 365 days of soap. And, uh, there they are. They're pretty. And there it is. The uh, basic three recipe from me to you. Go try it. See what you think of it for sure. As you can see with that bubble, uh, even though the soap calc and the INS said, oh, it's not going to be bubbly or oh, it's good. This soap was tested 12 hours after it was cut. And that bubble is big, beautiful and amazing. So take that for what it is. Coffee does help with that too, but that's a different story entirely. And I guess that's something that we'll have to deep dive on when we do a dedicated coffee video. So, you know, I'll put that on the list for sure. But yeah, that's, that's the basic three. It's, 
I love this recipe because all of these oils are very, very easy to source and they're reasonably all also very inexpensive. And so you can make a really good bar of soap just with three oils. And for people outside the United States who are having to formulate their recipes and then submit them to get approval, you really do want you know a workhorse recipe that you can go to time and time and time again knowing that your cost is going to be good and that the performance is going to be great and you know, all the jazz so there you go uh, again make it let me know what you think of it for sure tell me your reactions and your results and all the things in the comments that would be cool um, and if you want to see other recipes and what else we do with all of this, because I'm starting out with some pretty basic recipes right now to help you guys with your master batching and your soapy catalog, you know, off the jump. But we will definitely get into some very complicated and weird things as, you know, we progress with all of this. So you should subscribe is the point of all of that. For those of you who are subscribed, hey, thanks for being subscribed. I appreciate you. Again, we will be doing a giveaway at 10,000 subs, so make sure you are subscribed that would be cool. And uh, I appreciate you guys joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. Tomorrow is another theme thing and it's a good one. So you're definitely going to want to come back for that. But for now, I'm done. So I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.